So to widow like a ton of Gen 2 Pokemon really needs some help. It's almost never used competitively, but what it does have going for it is a nice base 100 attack and 115 defense. Plus, it has the ability Rockhead. This means that Sudowoodo doesn't take recoil damage from moves. We paired this with a nice stab 150 power head smash and can actually do some solid damage. It can also take advantage of Woodhammer for coverage, and without recoil, it's actually kinda solid. Ladies and gentlemen, today I have gone where no man has gone before, and that is bringing Sudowoodo to a competitive match. The tree needs some love, and I'm here for it. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k. The growth has been awesome lately, the support is greatly appreciated, and without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match. So here's the thing about fellas like Sudowoodo. People really don't expect much from it, so when it is able to actually do something, it's extremely surprising and it catches people off guard. So, I decided to lead off with the old Cherry Tree cheerleader himself, and I'm just gonna go for the Stealth Rock turn one, as they end up leading off with the Walnut. So, they go for the Stealth Rock of their own. Of course, they do have the opportunity to get the Rapid Spin up, but I'm fine with it. Honestly, I have a decent matchup here with the Sudowoodo. I can do, you know, pretty decent damage with the Head Smash. And I'm not all that concerned about their hazards, considering I do have the Rapid Spin support in the back with the Snowflake. So I'm just going to go right for a Head Smash here as they go for the Toxic Spikes. And again, I'm fine with them staying in here and just wasting resources, setting up hazards if that's what they want to do. I know that Head Smash is going to do a decent chunk if you can actually connect, because you know, I do in fact miss. Big ass bulbous target over there, can't even hit it. So now they decide to go for the Rapid Spin, they're just going to get rid of my Stealth Rock. Um, which, of course, you know, doesn't really hurt me, and now I can just go for that head smash. I figure it'll be about a three-hit KO, uh, depending on kind of what this fortress is working with. And we do a nice little chunk there, and that is fine. I have answers in this thing in the form of, like, Chandelure, but I feel like I can honestly get Sudowoodo going here. One of their answers to it is going to be the Quagsire, and I can Woodhammer that. So I'm just going to stay in here, go for another head smash. It does a lot to their team, depending on what they want to switch into. Um, pretty much nothing wants to wants to deal with the head smash, for real. They just go for another layer of toxic spikes, which is going to induce a nice little bad poison upon switching. But I do connect on another head smash, and it's actually looking like even after the leftover recovery, one more is going to kill. So, I have a couple options here. Either I could go for the reed and expect the quagsire, or just stay smashing. I tell you what, I probably should have named this thing the Hulk because I'm just out here smashing. My head is in absolute shambles at this point, but I'm going for one more head smash as they do actually end up going for the Volt Switch here and bringing in the Arch Nemesis Quagsire. So, of course, Quagsire can take a head smash all day, but I do in fact have the coverage with the Wood Hammer. Now, Sudowoodo's ass may be just petrified wood, but he does still have a little grass in him. So what I'm going to do is go for the Terra Water. That's going to cover for if the Quagsire is actually faster than me and going for... Uh, something like the Surf to knock me out. So I'm going to go for that Terra Water, and then I know if they stay in and don't tear themselves, a wood, a wood Hammer just destroys the Quag. So I put the old Fountain on my head, and uh, Sudo would have looking absolutely ridiculous. But I do actually outspeed and just smash this fucker's head in with a hammer, and that uh, that is going to be a dead Quagsire. And I'll tell you what, the Sudo demands respect out here. Grabbing kills, we're actually still in a pretty good spot here with that Water Terror, which is why and I wasn't afraid to commit it. I actually still have a good matchup against a lot of their team. So, on the free switch, they decide to go into the Heracross. The Heracross is going to go for the Trailblaze, but since I'm so bulky, I'm able to live. Uh, it gets its speed boost, but you can enjoy that speed boost in hell, buddy, because I go for this Head Smash, and that is just going to knock it out. Um, and that is amazing. The non-recoil Head Smashes are out here coming in clutch. So, one important note, I am actually at the perfect amount of HP for a little snack. In comes the fortress, they know they outsped earlier and a Volt Switch kills. However, it's lunchtime, baby. I'm gonna go ahead and activate that Custat Berry. I am in range, which allows me to go first. And I do connect on another head smash, and that takes care of the fortress. So, listen, I've, I was not kidding when I'm telling you, the Sudowoodo is going places where this fella has never gone before. And we've just taken, taken care of literally half of their team, which, is actually hilarious. So, now they're gonna go into the Typhlosion, and I'm just gonna stay in here, let this thing do its thing. It is, of course, gonna outspeed. I'm all out of Custap Berries, and an uh, Eruption does finish off the Sudowoodo, but little homie could not have done better, and I am proud of our little dude here. So, that takes care of me, and now I get to switch into whatever I want against the Typhlosion. So, the bad news is I can't really get in the Snowflake to go for the Rapid Spin, as, of course, I'm staring at a Typhlosion, and I've used my Terra. So, I decided to go into Bread. He's coming in, he's loafing, he's straight up chilling, and he's not even afraid of the cool flames you got on your neck, because 
I know that as long as this thing isn't choice specs, I should be able to take an eruption. Now, they do stay in, go for that eruption, and I'm barely able to live it with that stealth rock. Uh, it's real close. And I just go for that giga impact because, you know, we're just an absolute thing. Might as well just be a bomb. We just go for that impact, and it is going to take care of the Typhlosion, which is actually like the scariest uh, member of their team left. So. I, of course, am poisoned, and I'm also going to have to loaf around this next turn, meaning I'm just going to die to my poison, but I was at least able to sacrifice the slacking to take care of the Typhlosion, and they were in good shape there. But their two remaining Pokemon are going to be the day and night siblings. This thing, Umbreon, is extremely annoying, and honestly, whenever this thing's still around, it's the game is not over, because they go for the wish, and this thing being the defensive asshole that it is, it is always extremely difficult to take care of. So. They go for the wish, I died of my poison, and now I get a switch into whatever I want. So it's important that I get rid of these toxic spikes. I know that I'm gonna have to basically like outlive this Umbreon. So I decided to go into the McFlurry. Have you ever seen a snowflake with boots on? Now you have. I got my Tims on, so I don't take any stealth rock or poison, and I can go for that rapid spin freely and get rid of all those hazards. So that's pretty good. That's step one. Now step two is figuring out how the hell uh, we're gonna we're gonna do this. So they go for the Thunder Wave there, just because again, Umbreon. Umbreon's one of those Pokemon where I really like this thing's design. It's a great Pokemon, gotta be one of my favorite evolutions. However, I absolutely despise both using this thing in battle and playing against it. It's the most boring Pokemon to play against because <laughs> I go for the freeze dry. It does, of course, absolutely nothing, but it does, however, turn his ass into a popsicle. And I figure, hey, that's actually, that might be the opening that I need to be able to uh, whittle this thing down. I do have a secret weapon in the back and that may be the first time anybody's ever said that about a Volbeat, but I do have the Volbeat, and I'm actually just going to hard switch into that thing, because I figure this thing will likely just stay frozen at least for a turn. I can come in for free here and potentially go for a Tail Glow, and then Bug Buzz just finishes off both of, you know, the uh, the evolution. So this thing does stay solid, and uh, Volbeat, honestly kind of being a dick, just dancing in front of him like, yeah, you'll never get this, buddy which a frozen ass. So, of course, this thing is damn near back to full with its leftover recovery, and at this point, I'm gonna go for the Tail Glow. And uh, after my little, we crack the old glow stick, um, the Volbeat's actually in, in full form. I do have the Focus Sash, knowing that I can take an attack from anything, and they decide to hard switch right into the Espeon. So, I go for that Tail Glow. Gives us a nice little drastic special attack boost, and uh, we are powerful out here. So, I can freely go for the Bug Buzz here and knock this thing out, but, they, of course, have not used their Terra yet at this point, and they are going to commit it here. So, um, Volbeat is very important for me in the remainder of this matchup to be able to take care of both of these things, but I didn't cover for the fact that, yeah, this thing just puts the candles on its head, and it outspeeds, of course, goes for the Psychic. I know that I can guarantee a live with the Focus Sash, but seeing as that knocks me down to 10 HP, that tells me that this thing is going to be choice specs, and that's actually important to know, but... What sucks is that now, of course, a Bug Buzz does nothing, and then this thing outspeeds me again and takes care of the Volbeat. So, I probably should have conserved this thing and hard switched into the Cryagonal, but I figured I should be able to still handle the Umbreon. I have my three Mons left, and I didn't want to switch into a Spec Psychic. I am specially defensive on the Snowflake, but being paralyzed, you just, you never know. Now, I do have the Chilling Water here, so I go into the Snowflake now. But at the health that this thing is at, it is uh, probably not going to die. So they just stay in, they go for another Psychic here. Does a little bit less than half, even after Choice Specs damage, which is insane. I was freely able to go into the Snowflake just because of the fact that I know that there's Specs and can't go for a Terror Blast. So uh, essentially, I go for another Chilling Water here, and they do want to conserve the Espeon. It's their biggest firepower at this point, and they're probably going to need it coming down the line. They could probably switch it back in, switch up their moves. But they're just going to, of course, go into the only other option, which is... Umbreon. So I'm paralyzed. This thing's frozen. We're just out here crippled as hell and honestly having a bad time. So I got listen, I got to put the team on my back for Sudo Wudo. We did we made such a splash with the Sudo earlier that I I can't go down like this, bro. This Umbreon is going to be the damn death of me. It does in fact also thaw out, of course, and then now goes for the foul play, which does do enough to knock me out in two, but I'm able to get a chilling water off to do literally it basically just gave this guy a nice cold glass of water. Just heals up the Umbreon. <laughs> It does get the attack drop, but, you know, he's still at full, and I must now devise a plan. And the plan is to just basically let McFlurry go down. I have really nothing else I could do at this point. Uh, this thing is not really all that useful. I did get rid of the hazards and stuff, so I guess that's fine. So, now I'm down to two Pokemon left, and they have two Pokemon left. The game has really taken quite the turn for the worse here, as that Fire Terra really kind of rustled my jimmy. So... 
Now I decide to go into the chandelier. So here's the idea behind the chandelier. Shout out to the agency. We're gonna go for the inferno. Now that's a really strong fire move that guarantees a burn if it hits, but it's actually 50 accuracy. So the idea is if I hit, I do pretty solid damage and a burn, but if I miss, I actually just also, I activate my blunder policy, giving me a nice speed boost. But I do connect on that first one, which is fine. I did wanna try to get some damage on this thing and the burn, but of course this thing has to be calm, literally max HP and special defense, as it takes pretty much nothing from that. And <laughs> Umbreon is literally so annoying. But the burn is at least gonna offset some leftovers a little bit. At this point, I'm gonna go for another Inferno, thinking, okay, 50% chance to miss. I actually hit again, two in a row. I need to go buy a damn lottery ticket, and all they can do is foul play. And since, you know, I don't have much physical attack, it's not gonna do much, but of course, then their wish comes true. And we find ourselves where I'm like, damn, okay, I don't know how long I can keep this up with the Infernos. Flamethrow is not gonna do enough damage. The idea was to be able to get enough speed to then be able to outspeed when the Espeon comes in. But then this thing has Thunder Wave because Umbreon sucks balls. I go for another Inferno, and I literally hit three in a row. Three 50% accurate moves. I, I have no idea what's going on. I'm honestly convinced that when you are running a, brun a blunder policy, it, it just makes your accuracy better. The game does not want you to get that item to activate. So if you ever just want to like not miss, just run the item that requires you to miss. So I'm going to go for it a fourth time, and that finally, I, I do actually end up missing. It avoids it. I do activate that blunder policy, and that is going to make Chandelier the fastest thing you know, on this side of the Mississippi, of course. But then they just go for the Thunder Wave. They, they essentially know what I'm up to at this point. There's, there's no stopping them from going for the Thunder Wave. I also just, I'm, I'm out of options against, against this Umbreon. But it is at half, and of course now it's at full because of the, the wish. This thing is literally here to torment my dreams, and it's still at full HP. And the only other thing I have at this point is going to be my Bruxish. So, Bruxis can't really come into a foul play. I also... I don't want to risk, I just don't want to risk it. I figure that thing's a good backup plan, so I'm just gonna stay in here with the chandelier and just go for some flamethrowers. Now, even being paralyzed, I am in fact faster. They're gonna fire off foul plays. I'm firing off flamethrowers, and we're gonna speed this shit up like 800% because that's pretty much what you gotta do when you're playing against Umbreon. It, there's not a whole lot happening except for flamethrowers and wishes, and so at this, I'm really just hoping for a crit at this point. I'm thinking it has to be a crit, a crit soon, right? But no, it, essentially it does not happen. Um, I go for another flamethrower here. They have a wish up and they actually decide to end up switching at this point. And Buddy is gonna roll the dice. They go into the Espeon on the flamethrower. If I get paralyzed, I'm kind of screwed over, but I do not get paralyzed. The flamethrower even knocks out the, the, with the Terra Fire and down goes the Espeon. And now all we have to do is deal with that stupid black cat. So, the battle is running out of time at this point, and Umbreon comes in at a very small sliver of HP. I'm thinking I could just not get paralyzed here, and I, I do get paralyzed, of course. So, this allows them to fire off one nice little foul play, and luckily though, the foul plays are doing nothing against the chandelier. Uh, it's, it's the cost of being a defensive dick like, uh, like Umbreon. You, you hit like a wet paper bag, but at this point, it is still closely in range after the, 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 the burn damage to where a flamethrower kills. And luckily, Chandler is able to not get paralyzed. A flamethrower does kill the Umbreon, and that is going to finally end the misery. So that, that was a really close match, and after the first half of it, I figured, wow, I found myself in a situation I did not expect, but, you know, that's sometimes the way it goes. So shout out to Umbreon being annoying, and thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.